it's an instrumental. There aren't any words. It starts right. with like trumpet. I'm pretty sure, and then it ex- trumpets. Yeah. <laughs> it escalates into like this whole band, and then the <laughs> end scene. I'm pretty sure it's John Garfield. No, maybe just Garfield. Mm-hmm. Um, clicking a TV remote. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyways, I was so happy when they took it off of Netflix. Oh, I would they not... didn't. They added another they... season. You're such a normal Angela. <laughs> Ah! Ouch. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local music scene and the people that make it, including me and my guests. And my guests today are a Las Vegas pop punk band uh, of siblings, actually, ranging from 12 to 16, uh, who were suggested by Anthony from Shadow of the Moon, thank you very much, who was a recent guest. They were formed in 2021, and they've already won Henderson's Battle of the Bands, played on Rock Avenue with former guest uh, Josh Coots, that's his radio show, had their music played at the Vegas Gold Knights game, and played many shows to get to where they got to play Life is Beautiful. So, banner year. <laughs> Their new 10 song album, What Teenage Angst, is out now. Please welcome to the channel, The Dollheads. Say hi. 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 We definitely haven't done that three times. No, definitely not. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> no, technical difficulties. What? So, <laughs> um, I, I'm not going to ask the same first question. I'm not going to make you answer that again. But okay. we, basically, they're uh, Nevada Music Academy alumni, and um, it's a great school. Or it's a chain of schools, right? They have them all over? I think maybe uh, two. Two. There are two. Okay. Well, it's a, but I have had more than one person come through here who's been oh. there. And it, it, they, they teach a lot of the rudiments and a lot of the um, fundamentals. Because, yeah. Because music is fundamental. <laughs> so, And they, all, the three of you inherited this musicianship and this love of music uh, that isn't necessarily music right now from your parents who are off off screen. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> You guys have something important to tell me? Oh, no, no, no. We'll tell you later. You're at work. Sorry, you're at work, baby. Yeah. Angela Avery. Yes? Why the hate for Garfield? Oh. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. So, they watched it every day, nonstop. Like, every time I'm downstairs, me. I hear that godforsaken intro, and like... <laughs> how's it go? How's, how's the intro go? It's it's an instrumental. There aren't any words. It starts right. with like trumpet. I'm pretty sure, and then it, escal- trumpets. Yeah. <laughs> it escalates into like this whole band, and then the <laughs> end scene. I'm pretty sure it's John Garfield. No, maybe just Garfield. Mm-hmm. Um, clicking a TV remote. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyways, I was so happy when they took it off of Netflix because oh, I would. They not- didn't. They added another they- season. You're such a normal Angela. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Dang, he, he clowned you. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, from there I wanted to ask, any plans to add orchestra to the band? Because I know you, you're a big orchestra fan. Ooh, I would love to do that someday. I love hearing all the instruments together. Like, um, I've been in orchestra for two years now. This is my second year, and I don't know why I never considered joining orchestra or band before, because it's so different being able to like get to know these other instruments, like, if you'd asked me two years ago the difference between a violin and a viola, I couldn't tell you. There's definitely a difference. There's, yeah. Yeah, there's definitely there's a difference, difference between the players, yeah. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. that oh, yeah. too. <laughs> and don't ever like don't ever call them the wrong one. I've made that mistake. Yeah, many people yeah, have. Yeah. Sure. Um, but I was I've never personally I don't think I've ever heard a pop punk band live bring out like strings even if it's just synthesizer or keyboard or something yeah and i was like i bet it would work if it's done right because isn't that it's kind of like ska yeah it's only instead of horns you're doing you know strings or you're doing i don't know wind instruments or something but you you could totally do it but it, i think also there has to be like it has to be the right song yeah it, it, has, it has to be like a, a grandiose kind of mm-hmm. november rain and guns and kind of thing <laughs> like we're gonna make this big epic thing um <laughs> To make it worth it. <laughs> Have you seen Metal Lords? Metal Lords? Yeah, it's oh. a movie on Netflix. Oh, I thought you meant like a band. 
No, oh, it's a movie. Sorry. They have Metal Wars. I feel like I've I've come across it on memes or something. Yeah, um, towards the end of the movie, they have a cello player instead of a bass player because they couldn't find a bass player. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> First of all, you can always find a bass player. <laughs> Go ahead. You just have to look hard enough. <laughs> yeah. Um, that sounds amazing, though. I'll have to check it out. Somehow. Huh? Yeah. So I'm just working my way down the line. <laughs> Keyboards to bass, huh? Yeah. Have you ever thought about a guitar? <laughs> I know. <mean>. No. <laughs> There's some amazing guitar players, uh, one of which teaches at School of Rock, uh, Lizzie Ott, and you could very easily turn a guitar into a bass guitar. And, you know, just a little... hmm. but just an idea, just thought. It's been a while, so I'll have to review yeah. keyboard. <laughs> oh, well, yes, I, that's true. Um, and then I know that um, you were leaning towards engineering, and there's a whole punk history, like there's more than one famous punk person who is also an engineer. Are you still leaning towards being a future punk engineer? Or? Um, well, I think it'd be cool to have, like, engineering as a side thing in music. It's like... <laughs> side thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my my follow-up to that is, um, any, are you leaning towards any particular um, discipline within engineering? Because, I mean, you can be an engineer in textiles or an engineer in, you know, uh, blue bits. Um... I was looking more at like civil engineering or when they start designing like ah, buildings and you're the, You want to be the person making one-way streets. <laughs> you want to tick people off. <laughs> yeah. She already does. Uh, uh, speaking of the Bay Area, <laughs> one-way streets everywhere. So, Austin. Uh-oh. <laughs> Megan. You slept through life as beautiful. <laughs> you slept all the way through Cage the Elephant. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, mullet, mullet. Yeah, like, apparently passed right out, because yes. that was after you performed, I guess? Yeah, yeah. it yeah. was late, too. Yeah, I was just sitting on the floor. And, and it was, you know, it was hot and stuff. Mm. Oh. I, I didn't I, I didn't really um, see a name attached to it, but who's, who was that signing your drumstick? Uh, or their drumstick, was it? It was, it was the that, Lone I think Star? it was at Life. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, that was at the... Um, Fourth of July. July. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Couldn't remember the holiday. <laughs> Sad thing is I'm born in July. So. Oh, no. <laughs> so that's all I have for the embarrassing deep dive questions. All right. So now some of the usual inter- interview questions I ask my, all my prey. Not least of which is I want to talk... I normally ask, let's talk earliest musical influence. I think we've established yeah. yes. that. Um, and, and And no offense, there isn't a lot of early to your lives right now, no. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, needless to say, I, I, I will, I will bypass saying what a lot of, uh, you know, what you've gotten in the past from other people, which is, you know, for so young, you're really amazing and all this stuff. You know that, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. but also, um, has it, it being such a crazy year, has it really hit you? Is it still kind of weird every time you get up and play? Um, Every once in a while, when I'm really thinking about it, yes, it does get weird. Um, Because it's crazy to think about how we're a completely different band than when we performed in March. Like, I remember I was terrified being up on that stage playing a, what was it, 25-minute set. Um, And just, like, recently I've gone, like, 45 minutes to an hour completely fine. Yeah. Right on. Uh, We're going to take a quick little uh, hydration break here because it's a little warm under all these lights, and uh, we'll be right back. We're back, and a couple more questions. I know it's uh, it's it's a it's a weeknight, but we talked about um, well, we didn't talk about earliest music influence. We've established that, but we also talked about you know how crazy this year has been and and how you're feeling about it. What I want to know is. To this point, is there anything that you wish you had done differently to get to where you are now? Any Anything that's been just like, let's, let's learn that lesson for the future or something? Uh, personally, I don't have anything like that. Um, I think what we did, like trying for Battle of the Bands, was something, like that was the right decision because that really helped get the ball rolling. And mm-hmm. after that, we just kept getting more shows. We did a couple more Battle of the Bands and those went really well. And we're here where we are now. <laughs> yeah. And it's honestly a really, it was gutsy and brave of you. And I'm sure you guys were pushing, trying to, 
You were, pu- <laughs> you were pushing and, and I'm sure totally not being overbearing <laughs> about it. But battle of the bands can go two ways. And I, 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 I've had many musicians in here and I've done it myself where you play battle of the bands strictly for exposure. Mm. But I think you won like what a thousand dollars oversized check. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, which is, is just amazing for any band to be like, we won, you know. I, I, I know I, I did a battle of the bands uh, very early on where we won, and I think we each got $100 or something like that. Oh, no, it was $200, which in the 90s was like, <laughs> hey, wow. Um, and, and everyone in my band was like 18, and I was 22, so <laughs> close. Right on. Um, from there, I wanted to talk about... Some of my usual questions don't apply to you three. <laughs> like, you know, f- how long you lived in Vegas, favorite show, you know, the favorite show memory. You're, there hasn't been a whole bunch of shows yet, right? We've actually had a lot this year oh, after yeah. Battle of the Bands. Yeah. Okay. Like just this month. Well then, do you have a favorite show memory? And it could be like something went really, really crazy or that was amazing. I checked off my rock star list of, of things I want to happen. Yeah, so... Uh, what you got? My favorite, it was actually really recently, uh, we had a Halloween show, mm-hmm. um, we were second to play, and middle of our set, we played Roots Radicals by Rancid, and on the bridge, where she's like yelling, yeah, yeah, the entire crowd just turned into a giant mosh pit, <laughs> and I was just, like, <laughs> looking out, and I'm like, <laughs> That's always a, an amazing so feeling crazy. when you moved people to, to move. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And next? Oh, my favorite show memory? Mm-hmm. That's a good question. That's why I ask it. Uh, a part of what makes a show a good show for me is the audience. And we've had like a variety of those. This show is another one that was pretty recent. We played at a store called Cemetery Pulp about oh. a month ago, maybe three weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And... I don't think I've ever had a show where I've had that many people singing all at once and I can hear them all, I can see them all, and I love seeing like people even all the way to the back of the room dancing with each other, enjoying themselves, and it, it helps me keep my energy too. <laughs> yeah, and you play very high energy, all three of you. Thank you. Thank you. So, you. Um, when we're performing, I like to be able to see, like what Angela said, see the crowd like up close, because sometimes you can see them singing along to our original songs and the covers we play. So that just makes me really happy. Right on. Um, Now, I know from doing some research that you kind of share the songwriting duties. Mm -hmm. Most of it's Mm -hmm. on you, just as the oldest, and you've had the most experience. Um, But have you tried, have you, how do I want to ask this? You've written anything besides pop punk that you th- you might want to throw in there, or are you sticking in that genre for now? Uh, yes, I have written songs outside of the pop punk genre, but mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what I... genre? That's what TikTok's for. <laughs> well, see, I don't typically sh- I only share the songs with them that I want to share, and those tend to be the ones that are like upbeat or that I know we can really put some punch to Mm -hmm. and there are other songs that just I know they'll fall apart I know I won't be able to like sing or play it with any conviction whatsoever like I remember I tried writing an acoustic song for a while I really liked that song but then I just kept rewriting it and rewriting it it just didn't work out so that's why I try to stick more to like the pop punk genre even if it's more like a mellow sort of like ballad ish There's definitely something to be said about singing the really emotional singer-songwriter, you know, putting your whole heart out there kind of thing. But there's, a, if you want to be, you know, just always have a popular, or always have a popular sound and be, you know, really, really high energy, mm-hmm. that's that's what tends to get people moving, like we said. Uh, are you familiar with Crimson Riot? Oh, that sounds familiar. I've heard of them. Roxy Gun. That sounds really familiar. Yes. I know I've heard of Crimson that. Riot is the pop punk uh, band that Roxy Gun Project, who's always playing down like Fremont um, and all around town, that, that Roxy Gun Project is their day job doing covers. 
And then they were like, well, we, but we, we also want to do this pop punk because they're <laughs> huge pop punk fans. And it's Roxy Gunn. She's the front person. And her husband, uh, Chris Reject, is, is bassist. And her drummer used to be her dad. Oh. And now it's her brother. Because he went on to be a drummer for Suburb- Suburban Resistance. That's so cool. And yeah, it's just always a family thing, right? And <laughs> the thing I love about them is that Chris, <coughs> pardon me, I'm 50. Chris is a, getting close to my age. Every single show, every single set, he starts out leaping in the air <laughs> on the beat. He's always just like... And I'm always just like, that's got to hurt. <laughs> but yeah, they, they also do the same thing where uh, even their slower songs still are very much powerful and um, high tempo and they're well written and they've been on the channel. They actually have the longest, they have the record here for the longest finished video, oh, an hour and a half. Wow. Yeah, I was editing that for a while, but that's what happens when... Four adults split a bottle of Jameson with shots. <laughs> it was a good interview, but man, I was watching it going, what were I thinking? <laughs> so you learn. You learn. You know, we have fun. Um, but no, if, if you get the chance to do a show with Crimson Riot, they're going to love you, and you're going to love them. It's it's so amazing. And they're very cool people. Like, they are super welcoming. They have a song about I'm Not Punk Enough. And, about, and they have a song called Gatekeeper, which is all about just, who are you to tell me I can't do this? Who are you to tell me, oh, you play pretty good for a girl? Or, you know, I'm not uh, punk enough because I don't wear, you know, the right clothes or something. Mm. And uh, they they would never be the, they'll, they'll be the first ones to say, so what if they're teenagers? You know? And and I, I really recommend uh, playing with Crimson Ride if you get the chance. Also the Negative Nancys. Yes, um, I've had uh, some, just, uh, some amazing bands on here and... The ones who seem to always just be the most supportive and inclusive, no matter who you are, no matter what you play, tend to be the, the punk world. You know, the metal, metal world's getting there. <laughs> metal, metal bands are getting there, but um, a lot of them are, are, I won't say stuck in their ways, they're just older. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> but right on. A couple more questions. Uh, number one. Granted that you, you know, the, as a band, we're basically like a year old, mm. right? A little over that. If you could change one thing in the music scene here, what would you do? What would it be? Start a fight. More all ages venues. <laughs> yes. So, more all ages venues. It is so hard to get gigs at like more popular venues because they're all twenty one plus. Yeah. And yeah. Especially in Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's what I was amazed at the space. I know you played there, mm-hmm. um, and, and I, I was amazed that it was. All ages. I saw like a ten-year-old kid, kid moshing. <laughs> oh yeah! And you, and you walk in. There's a bar. And, and yeah. it's, it's a really cool uh, venue. It's a really cool space. <laughs> um, speaking of which, before I move on to the last question, stick around. We're gonna have a music video from them, and uh, I think we have some uh, some fairly big news to uh, to say too, right? Maybe, maybe. <laughs> but before we get to that, if you want to be on the channel, whether reviewed, interviewed, or both. Hit me up using my email address down in the description, or click on that Room 6 social media link. It's where you can find me all over the internet, as well as ways you can support the channel, such as room6.shop for, for merch. Um, i got my own CDs out. i got a couple CDs. And also a uh, Patreon page. You can be a patron. I have patron-only content. Um, it all helps the scene, helps me make better videos, and also helps me fund things like Room 6 Rocks showcases, like I did one last summer at Chiba Hut. That is, that's really my ultimate goal here is to be able to thank the musicians that come on the channel and say, hey, how'd you like to do a show with four other acts that have been on the channel? Sound nothing like you whatsoever. <laughs> you can sell merch. I'll pay you. Maybe you get free food. And, and it's a chance to play for people who would never normally see you. So be prepared at some point, a couple years from now probably, because I've done over a hundred of these, <laughs> I'll be reaching out. Um, that being said, Last question. You made it. Yay. You made it, guys. <laughs> I normally ask this to older people. And I say, let's pretend we're talking a little you. <laughs> but in this point, I'm going to switch it up. Let's pretend we're talking a future you. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> oh, snap. Time to put on the old fortune teller hat here. Mm, ten years from now. Okay. Keep that in your head. Okay. 
You're all probably moved out. Hopefully still together doing music in some way, shape, or form. <laughs> Don't give me that <laughs> the look. Silent agreement was reached. <laughs> Regardless of whether you're still a band as the Dollheads, go ahead and talk to... Uh, normally, this, this question is meant to basically address new musicians who are watching. Mm. Like, how do I sound like that person? How do I write music like that? I'd like you to talk to the, the old and old and dusty ones who maybe have forgotten why they're doing this. What would you say to, ten year, to you 10 years from now? What do you wish that person had, had, had heard from you? Um. Like, imagine you've gone in the future and you're like, you're never going to believe this. <laughs> That is a deep question. I am not prepared. <laughs> Future me. Well, I would hope she's still writing music because okay. for like, even though I don't like stuff I've written in the past, like stuff since sixth grade, that's when I started writing. Um, it's always been a way for me to cope with stuff. Like if something made me like mad or upset or something made me even happy. Mm -hmm. Music's always been my outlet, so I hope that's still what Future Me is using to get her thoughts out, get her emotions out, and bring people together. Nice. Next! <laughs> um, I would say I hope Future Me still has the passion she has for music and that she still feels that excitement for each and every one, sh each and every show she has, no matter how many we're getting. And you? Uh, be deep often. <laughs> yeah, come up with something philosophical. <laughs> I'm very sure in our Uncle Iroh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Keep on beating things with sticks. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's inspiration. <laughs> Hitting things is going to get you so far. <laughs> <Stick>. <laughs> uh. What goals do you have? What do you that you know what I should have I phrased it like that. <laughs> what do you hope that ten years from now you you you're doing or you, you are like? Uh, I hope uh, maybe to be able to meet some of our musical inspirations too. Oh yeah, yeah that's a good one. Okay, to who play are some of your Green Day. to play with Green Day? Yeah. All right, I'll put a call in. <laughs> I'll, I'll have my wife reach out. <laughs> <laughs> sure, they'd love that. Yeah, right. Um, awesome. Thank you very much for coming on the show. Of course, thank you for having us. No worries. Thank you very much for watching, and stick around for that music video, like I said. But first, make sure that you follow them down in the uh, description there, and have their social media down there, because not only have they played Life is Beautiful, and they have some Battle of the Bands, and all this other cool stuff, what do you got coming up? We may or may not be playing at Punk Rock Bowling in May. I <laughs> can't wink. Right? And also, b b before that, we got the Pineapple Fest. Oh, yes, Pineapple Fest. This Fish. video will come out after that, probably. Um, but, yeah, best of luck on that. Thank you. Punk Rock Bowling. Um, I'm really hoping to make it this year. Every time I think I'm going to go, somebody needs an interview, and it's got to be right then. Um, so if, 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 if you are playing... Please let me know. Uh, and which stage, or, or rather, which venue? I guess now it's it's really spread. Uh, it's on the monster stage. Logida. <laughs> okay then. <laughs> well, maybe it's on the monster stage. Maybe. Give me a press pass. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Well, in the meantime, we're gonna uh, say goodbye for now and uh, get over to that music video. And uh, which which song is it for again? Uh, I wish that I were one. a demon. <laughs> I actually really dig that. Oh, and thank you. My my kid is is super into that whole genre of anime, and and so um, I was just like, you might like them. You should listen. <laughs> so right on. In the meantime, I guess we'll uh, temporarily say goodbye. Temporarily say goodbye. Temporarily say goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Temporarily. Temporarily. Goodbye. 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 We'll be back. <laughs>
I want to thank the Dollheads for coming on the show. It was a great interview and an awesome music video. Definitely check out their links down the uh, description there so you can follow them and catch them live. They're amazing. Uh, and hey, how about, you know, pick up the album while you're at it. <laughs> it's available all over the social media um, or all over anywhere you can buy music online. There you go. In the meantime, if you want to see more videos like this, please click over here somewhere. If you'd like to subscribe, you know what to do. Click down there and don't forget to ring the bell. Remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time on Room 6. Say goodbye. Bye. Bye. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. <laughs>